Hello, my name is Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our vocabulary, les vocabulary lesson number 69. Let's learn some words, shall we? Let's improve our vocabulary. Let's learn some new words. The very first word we have here is pedantic. Now, do you know what it means to be pedantic? Let's find out. Of course, as always, as always, if you watch any of the first 68 videos of the vocabulary, you know that uh, we always make a point of writing down the pronunciation, no matter how simple the pronunciation might be. Do you understand? Never, never take liberties with the pronunciation. Don't just assume that it's going to be pronounced in a certain way because sometimes some words surprise you and you, you, find, uh, you find yourself in situations where you end up making a fool of yourself because you assume the pronunciation in a certain way, but it wasn't. I have learned it the hard way, particularly if you are a non-native speaker. Do you understand? Anyway, pedantic. What does it mean? It, is, it simply means to be, to be excessively, to be excessively scholarly. And I'll explain that in a second, what it means to be excessively scholarly. It means to show off showing off one's knowledge. If you're saying something purely for the sake of showing off your knowledge to, to show to other people, look how much I know, and uh, you show, you're picking on their mistake here and there, but you're being pedantic, you're being excessively scholarly. Do you understand? It means to be, it means ostentatious, ostentatious, concern for formal rules. Ostentation's concern for formal rules. Here, you, 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 your concern about the rules of grammar or, or spelling or whatever it might be, is purely for the sake of uh, showing off to the other people. Look at me, I, I know so much, you know, you know so little, you're being pedantic. Do you understand? For example, for example, if somebody makes a, some tiny mistakes, or somebody makes a very subtle mistakes, and, uh, and, and you notice it, but you, want to, you don't want to just so, uh, tell them in a very, very blunt manner, you might start out by apologizing. Listen, uh, by, by, you might start out by apologizing by saying, listen, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be pedantic, but this thing is, is supposed to be spelled that way, or this is supposed to be an adverb, and this was supposed to be this. So whatever tiny mistake that they make, you start out by saying, listen, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be pedantic, but this is what you have done. Because you're pointing out some small mistakes that, that might have easily slipped by anybody. Do you understand? The word is pedantic. Next three or four words that we're going to learn, maybe next three, four, five words that we're going to learn, are going to be very simple words for native speakers, but uh, it may not be very simple for non-native speakers. And non-native speaker as I am, I want to learn these words. I want to learn these words in a very formal way so that, uh, so that they become part of our working vocabulary. Let's learn the word. The next word is, and this, these next few words have absolutely nothing to do with pedantic. We're done with it. We're going to move on to something new. Hoodlum. As I said, it's a, these are very silly words. These are very silly words, but I'm going to learn them anyway. Hoodlum. What's a hoodlum? A hoodlum is a thug. A hoodlum is a thug. He's a gangster. A gangster, a thug, might be described as a hoodlum. A hoodlum is a is a is a rough, rowdy, destructive young man. A rough, rowdy, destructive young man or young lad, whatever you like. And typically these are young men or young boys, do you understand? They go around the street putting graffiti on the walls, just destroying properties, uh, doing uh, not major crimes, but uh, engaging in activities uh, uh, which are purely, they're doing it purely for the fun of uh, being destructive. They're hoodlums, they're hooligans. Oh, here's another one, hooligans. They're hooligans, that's what they are. They're hooligans, and of course hooligans is a very straightforward word. Let's learn one more word which means basically the same thing as hoodlum and hooligan. I'm going to put it on the top. I'm going to put it 
put it on the top. The word is or perhaps we can just put it right here because they all mean the same thing. The, the word is a ruffian. Let's learn. A ruffian, a hoodlum, a hooligan, it's just a rowdy young kid trying to show off, you know, because he wants to be rebellious, do you understand? He's a, he's a hoodlum, he's a hooligan. Let's move on then to something new, something different, a word which is not quite related to hoodlum or hooligan, but it's a word that I wanted to learn, which is why we do all the words, obviously, because we want to learn them. Remember, I'm, I'm going to break into a little sermon, I'm going to break into a little sermon as always, remember, there are three levels of vocabulary. We always talk about three levels of vocabulary. What's the first level of vocabulary? A first level of vocabulary is where you come across a word, you recognize the word, you have seen this word many times, and you sort of know what it means. What's the second level of vocabulary? Second level of vocabulary is where you know the word so well that if somebody were to appro approach to you and ask you what does this word mean, you can articulate very, very easily. You can articulate it, you can tell them exactly what it means. That's the second level. Whereas first level, you sort of know the word, but you can't quite articulate what it means. If somebody were to ask you, what does it mean? You say, well, I don't quite know how to articulate it. That means you, you have the basic acquaintance with the word, you have the basic acquaintance with the word, but you haven't quite mastered it. Second level is where you know the word, and somebody were to, if somebody were to ask you what it means, you can actually articulate the meaning. You can exactly tell them what it means. What's the third level? The third level of vocabulary is where I want the, my, my, my vocabulary to be, where all of these words that you see there, I want to become. I want them to become part of my working vocabulary. I want to become. I want them to become part of my working vocabulary, where we start using these words without actually realizing that these are vocabulary words. You just use them in your speech. You use them in, the, in your writing, and you own those words. That by that point, third level of vocabulary is where you own the words where they cease to be vocabulary words. They no longer. They no. They are no longer vocabulary words. They're just words. You know them. You own them. That's the highest level. That's where I want to be. So these words, of course, I knew them, but I want them to be the third level. I want it to be the highest level where I can, where I feel comfortable using them in my speech and writing uh, with confidence, without having to wonder about it, without having to uh, worry about whether or not I'm using the right word in the right context. Do you understand? So this, which is where the next word falls in the next category, which is where, which is the category the next word falls in, which is, the word is miscreant. You know what a miscreant is? Let's learn it, shall we? First the pronunciation. Miss Cree and miscreant is a noun. Miscreant is made up of two parts, the prefix miss, and the second part comes from the French word quoi, or Latin if you like. Uh, quoi in French simply means to, to believe. And you will conjugate it. Je crois, tu crois, nous croyons and so on and so forth, which simply means to believe. So what does the word literally mean? Literally it means non-belief. Literally it means not, not to believe. And therefore miscreant simply means a non-believer. A non-believer. An infidel if you like. How does one spell infidel? I do not know how to spell it. An infidel. That's what a miscreant is. A miscreant is a non-believer. And as I explained to you already, it literally means not to not believe something. Miscreant. Which could be loosely, very loosely could be used as a villain, which could be very loosely used in, in the context of being a villain or a bad guy uh, or any, any non-desirable character. Do you understand? A miscreant. Let's go on then. The next word that we're going to learn, uh, where can we put it? We have to squeeze some somewhere. I don't want to raise anything, that's the problem. And the word is, well, we have to raise it, we have no choice, we need to do. The next word is nothing to do with miscreant. We're going to move on to something different. This is a fun word. It is a real word. It is a real word. Colloquial it may be, but it is a real word. The very first time I came across, I found it very amusing. I wanted to learn it. I wanted to find out what that is. Hobbledehoy. What's a hobbledehoy? It's a noun. A 
een Hubble die gooi. Is de is de Gorky adolescent boy. An awkward, an awkward, clumsy adolescent young man, adolescent young man is actually redundant, adolescent uh, boy, he's a hobbledyhoy. Do you understand? He hasn't quite uh, matured yet, he doesn't quite have the self assurance yet, he's clumsy, he's awkward. He's an adolescent, he's a hobbledyhoy. Do you understand? So if somebody tells uh, some, if, if your parents tell you or if you tell a child don't behave like a hobbledyhoy, uh, be, be a little bit more refined. Sit down, calm down, so don't, don't, be, don't be like that, don't move around so much, you understand? Behave in a very refined manner, behave in an elegant manner, don't, your, 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 your character, your behavior is like a hobbledyhoy, do you understand? What's it, what does Gorky mean? Gorky, that's how you say it? Gorky. It simply means, as we just said a little while ago, an awkward and clumsy person. An awkward and awkward and clumsy person. It's an adjective because we are describing a person, a gawky boy, a gawky adolescent boy, is an awkward clumsy boy. He's a hobbledyhoy. Interestingly enough, there is no such word, an equivalent word, a comparable word for a girl. So there is your sexism. Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on. We're going to learn next three or four words, uh, maybe five words we're going to learn. All of these words, next five words we're going to learn, they all, they all basically mean the same thing. And they all basically mean to steal something. The next four or five words we're going to learn, they're, they're all going to mean to take something from the owner without the owner's consent. To take something from the owner without the owner's consent is a bloody awkward way of saying you're stealing it. Do you understand? Let's learn it. Like I said, we're going to learn about four or five words. The very first word is pilfer. Pilfer. means to steal usually how do you spell usually? usually something something of trivial nature something of trivial nature usually something of trivial nature we're not talking about stealing diamonds, we're not talking about robbing a bank, we're not talking about stealing somebody's uh, wallet, we're talking about pilfering, we're talking about chump change here, so a small amount, trivial things. Uh, for example, uh, 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 on Hubble Hoy walking down the street by the, by the, uh, by the guy who, uh, who's selling fruits from his fruits cart and he's walking down, he might pick up an apple and keep walking, he just stole an apple, pilfering. Trivial things, small amount, something of uh, something in, uh, as in as in small as in as in small amount, small amount of cash maybe, or an item, or an item of little value. Do you understand? If somebody steals something that is uh, of significant value, that's not pilfering. So pilfer does mean to steal, but it does have a very specific nuance. And of course we know the word nuance. Nuance, I believe, was the very first word we learned on the very first day. I'm pretty sure of it. I had a long break in between. I have not done be I have not been doing this vocabulary words for a long time, so I'm getting in the getting back in the rhythm of thing. It was the day number one. Nuance. What does nuance mean? Nuance means minute and subtle differences in the meanings of the word. Simply knowing that it means to steal is not enough. You have to bring out the nuance. You have to bring out the minute, subtle differences. Do you understand? So stealing $100,000 from somebody is not pilfering. Pilfer has a nuance of stealing something of trivial nature. 
small amount, insignificant of little value. Let's move on then, we are taking too long. How about this word? Purloin. Purloin. Verb obviously, pilfer was also a verb. It means to steal. To steal or to filch. That is a good word. Filch. Which means to steal. To steal. And here, here it does not need to be something of insignificant value. Here it could be anything. Do you understand? To, to pilfer, to purloin, uh, to filch, they all mean to, be, uh, to steal something. But purloin and filch, well, it's just stealing. It doesn't have to be insignificant value. Let's move on to something, another word which also means to steal, but it has a very different nuance. It is used in a very different context. And the word is, where can we put it? We need the, we need the room. So we're done with... We're done with parloin, we're done with filch. Let's put it here. Plunder. What does it mean to plunder? Well, plunder means to loot. It means to loot. To loot as in to take something by force, usually in the time of war. Usually in the time of war to take something by force by force especially in time of war it doesn't usually it doesn't usually happen anymore in most part of the world but it does go on actually still in some parts of the world, particularly in Africa and some part of Asia where two small nations fight and the uh, army of one nation uh, barges into the other one and they start looting the village, they start, they start plundering it, they steal everything, whatever they can find they steal it and that's called plundering, that's, that is stealing but it has a very special word the word that we want to use is plunder, which means you are stealing during the time of war. This is your, this is your booty. This is your, this is your reward. What they call the spoils. To take as, to take as spoils. To take as spoils. That's how we speak. To take as spoils means that this is, this is what you, this is what you take during the time of war. Uh, foreign, foreign, foreigners barge in your, in your, in your territory. And they start looting, they start plundering, they start pillaging. There is a good word, Pill pillage. Where can we put the word pillage? Pillage and plunder, pillage, pillage and plunder, they both mean the same thing. They both mean to take something, to take something by force particularly in the time of war. And that's all I have for today. That's all I have for today. I'll see you tomorrow on day number 70. Okay? Bye now.